video is uh, meant to help students who are starting out with circuit building and measurements um, and if you're working with breadboards or proto uh, proto boards for the first time um, uh, i'm hoping that this will help so the first thing that i'll go over is how is the breadboard connected beneath the plastic so if you look at a breadboard and if it's, it's something looks something like this you have a ic bridge in the middle where there is no connection going over that bridge above that you have connections underneath the plastic vertically five at a time so those holes are connected underneath that plastic with a wire five at a time um, and the same thing over here five at a time all the way across up to here However, if you look at the top and the bottom, those are power rails. Those are meant for power supply and ground. These are connected horizontally all across the board behind that plastic. And we'll use this knowledge while we are making the circuit on the breadboard. So we are using a battery here to represent, we are using this battery uh, to represent VS, uh, an independent voltage source in our circuit. We have three resistors, R1, R2, R3, and let's suppose this is R1, this is R2, this is R3, three resistors. Uh, they are all one kilo ohm each, and I know that is right because this is a brown, black, red resistor with a gold indicating tolerance of 5%, plus or minus 5%. Next, I have a multimeter which is going to help me measure the voltage and i'm trying to measure the voltage across r2 in this particular exercise so i'm going to use a voltmeter for that so starting out i need to connect my voltage source to my breadboard and the way i'm going to do that is of course i'm going to need some help with uh, battery connectors and whatever connector is available to me that which will work I'm going to connect this positive terminal over here to this positive rail. So that rail becomes 1.5 volts, which means anywhere I need 1.5, I can tap from any of those holes. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to do the same thing for ground. So this means that now my second row of holes has become ground wherever i need ground i can tap it doesn't have to be this first hole you could have connected it anywhere just don't connect it for the on, on the fr first one because then you will have a short circuit across the battery and your battery is going to so uh, 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 supply uh, a lot of current and it's going to drain now uh, I've connected the battery to my breadboard. I'm now going to build this particular uh, network of resistors. So what do I have? I have R1, one end of R1. Let us say I, let us say I highlight it uh, as that. That end is connected to the positive terminal of my battery. So what I can do is I, I, I have a few options here. What I can do is I can directly connect anywhere over here in the top row or I could have put it over here and then used a wire to connect those two points uh, I'm, I'm going to try to avoid using wires as much as possible because then it increases the chances of um, missing some connections or because of bad wires so I'm going to connect my resistor R1 directly to my voltage source and I'll do that uh, let's say with red and I'm going to say I have connected it over here. <clears throat> Which essentially means I've made this connection. Next, the other end of R1 is going to some new point. And I can choose that new point anywhere. Let us say that my new point is here. So I'm going to take this wire here. And then bring it across and connect it at some point on my breadboard so the moment i do that all of this those five holes have become that node what do i have connected to that particular node i have one end of r3 and one end of r2 connected to that same node let's see if we can do that let's do it in blue one end of r2 connected to that node one end of r3 
connected to that node. Five holes available, I'm using these three. Doesn't really matter. You have to be on that column though. Uh, so I've made this, these two connections. Uh, let's see where the other ends of R2 and R3 are. Second end of R2 has to be grounded. Second end of R3 has to be grounded. And I know that my power rail over here is the ground. So I'm going to take wires or directly pop those resistors over there from here to ground, from here to ground. I think that's, that's it. I've completed my circuit. So plus 1.5 goes through the resistor and then splits between two resistors. Both of them I've connected to ground. That's it and then back back to the source. So that's how I build the circuit. Now let's talk about how you measure voltage. So when you want to measure the voltage across R2, I need one probe to go here and I need the second probe to go here. And I've, of course, I'm trying to measure voltage, not current. So I'm going to be using voltmeter. So I'm going to use this one at one end and the other probe for ground or common at the other end. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, with a different color <clears throat> maybe I'll choose pink and I'll use a slightly thicker line so from the V slot I'm going to make a connection to the junction because this guy over here is this guy over here Next, what do I have? I have the other end. Let us use uh, some other color for that. Let us say I have, say, orange for that. Common to ground because the other one, uh, the other one has to be across R2, which is almost the, the same thing as saying across the ground. So I'm going to connect that to ground right there. The moment I do that, I have placed a voltmeter across R2. And if I set up my dial properly, I'm going to be measuring up just shy of 0 0.5 volts <clears throat> across voltmeter. How I do I know that? Well, I have done circuit analysis and figure out, figured out that the theoretical value of voltage across R2 is going to be 0 0.5. And because this is a practical value, it's going to be slightly lower than 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.48 or 49, something like that. Uh, but you also have to remember that there is a dial on this um, a digital multimeter that has to be turned for DC voltage measurements. And because I know that I'm reading something like 0.5, I'm going to set it towards this 20 so that my precision is proper. So turn the dial and hopefully you read the, the, the right value. All right, I hope, uh, for beginners, uh, this helps.